Hey, hi, hello, how are you? I'm Pia, and today we're talking about all of the books that I read during January. Buckle up, buckle tight, sit tight. I don't, I don't know what I'm on. <laughs> I read 18 books in January. I don't know how that happened. My Goodreads says I think right now I'm like three books ahead of schedule, which is kind of upsetting because my Goodreads goal is like 175 books. I don't have a life, okay? Like I'm trying, but it's hard. If you don't already, make sure to friend me or follow me or whatever you want to do on Goodreads just so you can get the latest updates on things that I'm reading. Yes, I know my currently reading is still like 10 books, but it's fine. We're working on getting it down. The first book that I read in January was Anne of Avonlea. Yes, I was supposed to read this in December. Don't tell anyone. I also haven't read the next book, Anne of the Island, yet because I have these editions at my uh, apartment in college. But I will, I promise I'll, I'll keep up. We are reading one of these books a month. February, I guess, is supposed to be Anne of Windy Poplars. I, I, I knew that. This is the second Anne book. I gave this five and five stars. I have a reading blog talking about it. Um, I did annotate it as well. This one was a lot of fun. Fun. definitely less sad there's not a lot that's sad about that book <laughs> but there are some sad moments yes I can't really give you too many thoughts because it's a sequel uh, it's just following the events of the previous book it's Anne's first years of teaching and she's learning a lot as a teacher and yeah she is 16 <laughs> she's a teacher but the next book that I finished in January was the X talk I keep wanting to call this the X hacks because that also came out this year or last year this is a Rachel and Solomon adult uh, rom-com type of book it is about um, these two people who work at a radio station kind of like NPR our main character she has been a producer for all of her time at this radio station and she really would like to rise above her ranks but she never really had the opportunity to do so it's a very like male dominated field and she has a really horrible boss um but she gets this opportunity because she has this kind of like really fun back and forth banter with this other guy at the station have this kind of rapport that like it's almost like as if they are exes and they come up with this idea for a talk show of exes who are amicable who are giving kind of dating advice and they're not actually exes um so it's you know starts on a big lie <laughs> so through that they obviously are doing the show they're getting closer and they have to kind of get to know each other it was really fun I really liked this concept I think it was definitely really new I think I've said this before I really am so excited about the Roman genre right now coming out with so many different types of scenarios and ideas and different types of stories and plots that we don't have the same cookie cutter things as always I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars I genuinely like really liked it there's some steamy scenes couple if you are into that obviously like the things that you expect to happen because of the situations that the characters put themselves in will happen no avoiding that but um I did really enjoy it obviously then I read a good girl bad blood this is the second book or like the sequel to the good girl's guide to murder a good girl's guide yes okay <laughs> I listened to this on audio I think this is the way to go for this series this is a YA mystery hi <laughs> really bad describing things and our main character has a podcast where she's trying to investigate these different crimes in the first book into this one a couple of like deaths in her town and now it is like this uh, missing persons case in her town which like how does this all happen in the small town <laughs> there's also like a romance which I, I genuinely don't care about. I, I mean, it's good for her, but it's really not important to the plot. I don't know. I don't remember it having as many like twists and turns as I felt like the first book did. The first book just like got wacky. This one didn't exactly, um, but I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I think these are such fun books. Like it's hard to say fun because obviously they're talking about like murder, but it's fiction also. Like let's all relax. I think that this is a really great series. I can't wait to read the next one. Then I read Everything Beautiful Is Not Ruined by Danielle Young Ullman. This is a book that took me completely by surprise. This book, I got gifted by my best friend Ashley and but I finally picked it up and this book was incredible. I'm so mad that I didn't pick this up sooner. This is about we kind of have two uh timelines going on. We have our main character. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I never know a main character's name. Ingrid. Okay. <laughs> we have our main character Ingrid and she's being sent to this like hardcore wilderness kind of like camping experience for like troubled teens and you don't really know why she's there you have kind of like ex-convicts and people who are like runaways and addicts and things like that and you don't really know what her place is there and it's not really revealed for a while and then you kind of have this other timeline and it just kind of brings you up to speed it starts really like young in her life and it's talking about how important her mom was in her growing up and how her mom with this like larger than life personality she was this great singer ended up losing her voice and that really kind of tore apart her life and her her family dynamic and it really affected her mom which in turn really affected Ingrid so this does deal with uh depression and uh attempted suicide and suicide self-harm and things like that so obviously it's a really hard-hitting book and really difficult to read obviously it has a really meaningful message everything beautiful is not ruined I think that's like a really great thing to think about yeah this book really really surprised me obviously I do love hard-hitting contemporaries that deal with things like grief and mental illness so this was obviously going to be something that I enjoyed if it was handled well obviously um I think that we had a really strong main character and 
really complex side characters and things like that that were really interesting uh, to read about in this really like unconventional setting like a, a hardcore wilderness camp where they're like literally in the middle of nowhere and have like nothing like that's intense so it was crazy you definitely felt that um, as a reader and it was really it was a really great book I really really enjoyed it. Five out of five stars. It was perfect. I loved it. I think I only DNF two books this month. So one of them. This is a Dirty Ratty Thing by Christina Lauren. I got 60% into this book. I was listening to the audio. And if you didn't know, this is like a smutty book series. It's about the first book, at least, is like this one night in Vegas, and these three girls go out to celebrate something, and they get matched up with these three guys, and they all end up married. The first book is the first couple, and they end up trying to kind of like work out their marriage, which was actually kind of wholesome and kind of cute. This one was a different couple. My issue with this book is maybe not everyone's issue, like I'm sure it has its audience. The plot to smut ratio wasn't really great for me. This is a pretty short book. The plot took so long to happen because we had to take breaks. I really don't know what the point of that was. I really skipped ahead a lot. I also thought it was funny that the, the guy character is a, our male protagonist, is a Canadian fisherman on Vancouver Island, which I thought was really funny. Like, I don't know. They just didn't have like personalities or anything, which was kind of upsetting. I, I kind of expected more from this one, unfortunately. Next up, I read A Little Princess by Frances Hogson Burnett. This, I didn't realize, is by the same author as The Secret Garden. Not that I read uh, Secret Garden when I was a child. I actually read it uh, because I was tutoring someone who was reading it. I've had this for so long. <laughs> but it's so cute. This is a Puffin and Bloom uh, edition. This was really, really sweet. It had like a main character that I just always like adore. Those kind of characters that are really just like kind of jump off the page, really like imaginative and creative, and that get put in a really bad situation but kind of try to make the best out of it. Our main character, I want to call her Sarah, but I can Sarah! Yes! Sarah is a storyteller. It reminds me a lot of The Story Girl by Ella Montgomery or just like like, well, like every kind of um but like especially the story girl and Anne of Green Gables. Sarah is kind of this like you know a little princess she is like adored by her father and he goes away to like do this like business trip to find gold or something like that or oil or something. He ends up uh dying and there's no oil and she has no money and so she has to work for the school that she was um going to. Obviously her entire life uh changes. I, it's really lovely to see like I said how she makes the best out of this situation and I think that it has really great messages especially as a children's classic it was it was really cute and I, I i really enjoyed it maybe a couple comments that are a little bit unsavory but it's it's hard you know it's a product of its time and and it wasn't anything major it was like a couple comments i i recall i gave this four stars all right then we have some arcs that i read um these i read for that reading vlog that i posted a little while ago first we have the kindred this book took me a really long time to read and i'm not really sure why for the majority of it i really did enjoy it i think that these characters were so rich and you could really feel their connection. We have like a prince and a kind of more like a uh, working class girl and they are kindred, which means that they are like, their minds are kind of connected. So they can communicate telepathically, but they can also like, but they can like feel each other's like emotions and physical things like ailments and things like that. So um, they're like super connected and they have this really, really great bond obviously because of this. But yeah, I think that they're such different characters and they really feed off of one another and they really like complement one another very well. But anyways, so they are aliens and they end up crash landing on Earth to escape like some shenanigans that are going on on their planets. Are kind of guided through the world by this like teenage kid who is just, you know, telling them about earthly life. It's very interesting. I think that it's like a cool kind of way to address some like maybe taboo things because, you know, they are aliens and they don't know anything. Or should I say extraterrestrials? I do not want to offend. I think that it kind of fell fell off a little bit for me. I think like once they landed, the plot kind of went in a formulaic way. It didn't really do anything that was new and it was kind of predictable. I ended up giving it like three out of five stars. Then I read a collection of short stories called All Signs Point to Yes. I was really really hyped about this book going into it because it is essentially pitched as like short stories um, about the signs falling in love. I have a lot of problems with this one. I really just don't like anthologies so it was really me taking a risk. Always kind of want more. I think like what is that? It's like a Jane Austen quote. It's like if a book is well written I'll always find that it's too short. Like especially with short stories. So it was really hard for me to get into a lot of these. There were like three that I really enjoyed. Can I remember them? I liked the Taurus one. I really didn't like what they did with the Libra story. Yeah, like some of the stories were like fantasy, which I just feel like is so hard to establish a world and a story, and especially like a romantic relationship. And then they also added like the 13th zodiac sign, which I have no idea anything about. <laughs> every, at the top of like every page, it's saying Venus in Scorpio, Venus in whatever. But 
as far as I can tell, like in the story, they were talking about how their sun signs are those signs. But yeah, I mean, more than anything, that was like a kind of nitpicky comment. More than anything, I just feel like um, they didn't establish relationships that I was interested in. But it is really like, I really wanted to love it. Um, it's super diverse, but I just couldn't see a lot of the relationships make being plausible or having enough time with the characters to see them happening. Unfortunately, I gave this like 2.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read You Can't Be Serious by Cal Penn. I really don't know a lot about Cal Penn, or at least I didn't going into this book. <laughs> obviously, I've seen the Harold and Kumar franchise, best representation of New Jersey chef's kiss but obviously so this is his uh memoir and yeah so i i didn't i don't really know how to talk about celebrity memoirs but i do really enjoy celebrities that even i'm even like mildly interested in or i have any sort of care about reading their memoirs i think it's like an interesting experience especially when i listen to audiobooks because this one's narrated by him i mean i think it was interesting to have his perspective on the film industry i didn't even know he was like theatrically trained actor which was really really awesome obviously because i've only seen these movies so i think that what he had to say about being indian in the film industry was super interesting uh provided a really interesting perspective that I personally cannot speak on whatsoever and I really loved that insight as well as just being an actor in general and how that's viewed in his family and by his like extended family and everyone who has to say something about it. This was less of a book about kind of like behind the scenes stuff of movies so like this is what happened that day on set of whatever like no. <laughs> talked a lot about like the audition process and talking to uh, people involved in different in different productions and how how those things work so I found it really interesting. I think he's a really funny guy. has a lot of great things to say give it four stars. And then I read Finley Donovan Knocks and Dead. Again, I talked about this in that arc video, so I'm just gonna brush on it quickly. I didn't enjoy this as much as the first Finley Donovan book, unfortunately. I haven't read a story that I've really enjoyed that is, like, focused more on, like, organized crime. I think that it had, like, the same, like, you know, fun, wittiness, and like kind of uh, shenanigans. <laughs> That's one of my favorite words of uh, the first book, but it was just kind of, like, less so almost yeah i was really expecting to love this especially because of how the last book ended i'm still going to continue on with the series it was solid give it three stars then i read a book i did not rate a bathroom book for people not pooping or peeing but using the bathroom as an escape by joe pear <laughs> my brother has this book in his bathroom and i was staying with him for a little bit i was not using the bathroom as an escape but i didn't rate this book it's a really interesting like uh illustrated book i guess it's you know kind of comforting in some ways and also funny and in Joe Perra's way, but I didn't read it. Then I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I'm so glad I read this. I put this on my five star predictions, I think. Listen to the audiobook of this one. Give you a little sister recap. So this is about Addie LaRue, what, like 300 years ago, uh, makes a deal with this kind of devil-like character. You know, she has, you know, free will, she has autonomy, she can do whatever the frick she wants. And he's like, oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. But like, once you're done with your Vita, I get your soul. And she's like, okay. She like shakes hands, says, you know, you know? So because the devil wants her soul, he wants to make her life as bad as possible, you know? <laughs> so that he can get it sooner. The second you turn away from her, forget who she is. So even if, you know, go to these people that you knew your whole life, they won't remember you. you. Spend one night with someone and they go to sleep and then they wake up, they won't remember you. And she kind of has to live this anonymous life and get by for 300 years. So we follow that, that timeline. And then we also have another timeline, which is in 24. 14 I want to say. She's in New York and she meets this guy and he remembers her. Intricately woven story. Like everything made sense and it flowed really uh well. I really thought that the characters were so human which is like kind of funny because like they're kind of not <laughs> you know. She's kind of immortal like and especially like our devil character I felt like he added so much to the plot and really just like became an allegory for this like kind of toxic relationship that she was in with him. But then there's also this really great romance that kind of stems from this like desperation of not knowing anyone but it you know develops into something more complex and, and you know people that really get to know each other and care for each other I'm trying so hard not to say beautiful because I know I say that all the time <laughs> was it was stunning it was gorgeous I adored every second of this book I want there to be more can there be like a sequel I don't know that being said I gave it five out of five stars so I read another Rachel and Zalman book I forgot I read this I read weather girl this is her latest book this is about a weather girl <laughs> what the fuck it's kind of like the parent trap or like the, the setup I'm gonna keep it on with the parent trap because they refer to the parent trap in this book and Rachel and Zalman herself has <laughs> compared this to the parent trap miss weather girl I, I'm not gonna fucking look up names and the guy who's like in sports they kind of team up to get their bosses back together because their bosses are like exes. They cause a lot of strife in the office and these two, our two main characters really you know, want to excel at their jobs. They want to get better and they want to have a really pleasant work environment, obviously. <laughs> they decide to create all these happen chances and obviously they get closer as well because they're spending time, 
doing that. I really really enjoyed this book. Um, this also has mental health representation. Our main character has um, depression and, and she takes medicine for it and it's like really great representation. Mental, health, mental illness meds I would say. Yeah I really I really enjoy her character. I think she is you know overly bubbly and nice and sunshiny to kind of overcompensate for that darkness that she feels sometimes. She doesn't want to be like this mother figure that she had in her life. So there's that really interesting dynamic. I think like parental relationships are super interesting and also like if you add a family kind of familial interesting family relationships into a like rom-com book it makes it just more interesting to me. Male love interest as a kid with like his high school sweetheart I want to say. Then there's also that added complexity. I obviously like really enjoyed it. I really liked our two characters. They have like fat representation, Jewish representation, like I said mental health, mental illness. They also have like a gay side couple and their kids. Oh my god their kids. The only thing that I didn't really enjoy about this book was the classic say it with me. So I was plotting out my novel the other day and um it's not because I always say the third act breakup because like that's like a thing that I recognize but it's really not ever in the main character gets annoyed at something that happens that just like was so unnecessary she like finds something out and then she's like oh my god how could you and I'm like girl do you not realize you've been okay <laughs> that was kind of annoying I give this four to five stars I still really really enjoyed it I really <laughs> I feel so bad this is my second DNF of the month. I didn't even get to 50% because I got really freaking bored with this book. Here's here's what's up. Here's I don't care about the legend of King Arthur. I don't care. I, and I hate to be so aggressive about it, but I really just don't care. Show me a good one. Show me the Avalon High level goodness that I wanted. This book was so much. This was so annoying. I just feel like when you have retellings like that, the story itself becomes so formulaic and so predictable. Our main character was so immature. She really was cringy, honestly. I don't know. I think that I had really high expectations for this. A lot of people love it. A lot of people love like this love triangle, which we know I hate a love triangle, so there's that. They compare it to like Cassandra Clare books. Are you a Cassandra Clare book? No. Also, just like a side note, he, her like love interest acts like fully so much more mature than her that I legitimately thought he was like an adult and she's like 12 for the sake of this argument. He's like an adult and she's like 12 and I was like this is kind of disgusting because you're not on the same level at all. I wanted to love this. Then I read a book that I really did love. I read Imaginary Friend. Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chabotsky. This is his second novel, which is kind of insane to me. <laughs> I really didn't know a lot about Stephen Chabotsky and then once I finished this, I read like his little flappity flap. But he's like a screenwriter, uh, has directed a bunch of stuff because I knew that he did Perks of Being a obviously. Um, and I know that he wrote the screenplay and directed that. But he wrote like, he co-wrote the screenplay for like the live action Beauty and the Beast and like some shows and like stuff. Like he's like kind of killing it. Okay, let me talk about this book. I, I know I've been reading it for a really long time. So it is really long and the font is really small which is why it took me a long time. I think also I just like wasn't in the mood for it. Ironically enough, this as a horror became kind of an escape for me. When I was really stressed, I've been doing online classes and they just are, to me, sometimes more stressful than in person. And so when I needed a little bit of an escape, I tried to go to a world that was a lot more fucked up than mine. Here we have our main character who is like eight years old. He's like a little tot and he starts hearing voices. And so he goes into the woods, you know, he starts building this tree house, which ends up becoming a kind of portal to a kind of another dimension. He gets these weird powers and it ends up kind of affecting literally everyone in the town. Yeah, and it kind of mirrors this thing that happened to this other little boy like years ago um, in the town who ended up dying in some mysterious way. This book was so twisty, so turny. The like last, oh my God. The things that happen in this book are freaking bananas. Like this is not for the faint of heart whatsoever. This is an adult horror book. I just want to make that really really clear even though we have an eight-year-old main character we have a third person omniscient narration so we do actually follow like all like the people in the town kind of and it was crazy like literally nuts and if you like you know twisty and turny horror movie horror movies horror books I would really recommend this one. I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about it but then again I don't really read a lot of horror. I really want this to get turned into like a mini series. I think that would be so fan freaking tastic because there's so many like really visual things but also just like so crazy. One of my favorite parts about this book or one of my favorite things about it is like how he plays around with the font. So he plays around with like font size, like different types of fonts that indicate different kind of voices and things like that. I think it's so cool. The last twist at the end literally shook it. Yeah, I gave this five and five stars. I think that if you want to read 700 pages of absolute bonkers shit going down. Next up I read I Hate You More. This is a rom-com style book. This is about a ex-beauty pageant beauty queen. One of the elderly women in the nursing home that uh, she works for has kind of enlisted her help to take her dog and uh, put it in this dog show. There, our main character, 
meets twins <laughs> and so one of these guys is like the dog show judge and like runs it the other one is like a dog trainer and they're both kind of mean at first like one of them sweetens up and you're like oh you're the love interest what's great about this book i really love the main character i think she's really strong strong character you know like dimensionally um and like a strong character and i also really liked our side characters the love interests i could really take them or leave them it wasn't really like a love triangle by any means i want to say that this book was so silly it was so silly. Everything in this book was implausible. Like nothing in this book could have happened. Like the situations, no one does these things. Like the way that the characters got together made no, like who the fuck does that? It tried to like be deep and talk about like uh, addiction, but it really didn't do a good job there. It ended up saying like psyche actually doesn't have an addiction and it was like kind of weird. I don't know. It wasn't great. I gave it two stars. Then I read Coral. This is another book that I had as an arc and then just forgot about it. This one I thought was really going to be great. It is a Little Mermaid retelling and it is kind of you know, a lot darker it's with uh, mental illness, specifically depression. It uh, talks a lot about suicide, um, attempted suicide and self-harm. That is a huge, huge part of this book. So tread with extreme caution if that at all triggers you. We have Little Mermaid is kind of out of place in her family and she sees that her her oldest sister is kind of being taken by what they call red tide which is kind of their term for depression and she sees her dealing with that and she knows that this thing takes over and you can't really stop it her oldest sister ends up dying by suicide we have a few different timelines we have coral Malaric, who's kind of the uh, prince eric kind of character then we have brooke who is like at this facility it's like a group home kind of thing and she's dealing with her own mental illness. So we have like a few different timelines. We have like a before and an after. I thought this was really great for most of it. I really enjoyed bringing harder topics of mental illness to a more like fantastical platform and I really really loved how that was done. However, obviously we have these like multiple storylines. Um, I didn't like how they were integrated. I just think that it lessened the effect that it had on some of the things and that like being in the real world and some of the real world things just didn't feel as impactful to me. So I ended up getting this 3.5 out of 5 stars. The last book that I read is a reread. It's of a night and cake of puppets. I love this book. This is like one of my favorite books. It's like my literal comfort book. I think this is the third time I've read it. I need to reread it every winter. It is perfect. It's a beautiful addition to uh, the Donner and Spoken Bone series and it's about Susanna who uh, is just trying to kind of like set up this perfect night and have her first kiss with a uh, with this guy. I don't know if it's Mick or Meek and it's literally so perfect. The illustrations in here are like freaking sick. Like hello. Um, It's kind of really really cool. Lainey Taylor's husband did the illustrations for this and it's just literally incredible. If you're wondering like chronologically this is happening during the first book. I love this book. I love it forever and always. Read it in one setting. It's gorgeous. If you haven't read the Daughters of Bone series, I recommend that you do. Um, but I think that if you want like a little like taste of it and you're not sure about it, I would actually pick this up first because I think you'll figure it out. Those are all the books that I read in January. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you read in January. That being said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to all of the things. I feel like I'm like uh, Disney. Bum, 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 bum. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to all the things, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.